Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Orgasmic Living. I am your host, Patty Alfonso, known to many as the Orgasmic Body Whisperer, creator of Pole Dancing for Consciousness and the Orgasmic Body Love Experience. And I am so jazzed for my guest today, the beautiful, talented, amazing, I mean, I just, this woman, Alana Pratt, I, we have known each other for so long. We couldn't even figure out how long it had been, but yeah. I know from my side of here that I have been watching her journey and her business grow and grow and grow and grow. She is the go-to expert and authority for intimacy, for those who have suffered heartbreak and are really looking to live unap unapologetically and find that open-hearted ideal relationship for them. So I am super excited for this conversation today. We have spoken many times before, so I know it's going to be juicy and jazzy and all the things. Welcome, 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 Alana. Oh. It is so great to see you again. I'm like, we've met in these different workshop situations. We dance together, pole dance together. We've been, you know, featured as experts on different Zoom. I think that was the last time we saw each other on like a yeah. Zoom panel together. And it's like, oh, I have you all to myself today. Yay. <laughs> I'm so Thank excited. You. I'm so excited. So I'm going to start off with the question that I ask everyone that comes on the show, and then we'll see where that takes us. Beautiful. So Alana Pratt, mm -hmm. what does orgasmic living mean to you? Mm. This could take the whole hour, but let's I know. <laughs> um, orgasmic living is when I live from my sacred pussy with an open heart and my mind is there, but it's like the divine mind is, is, is hearing that smaller, quieter whisper, not uh, shutting off the pussy, closing the heart, living in the mind from fear, strategizing, got to do it right. Got to be safe. Got to look good. Got to, got to, got to, right. So it's really about dropping out of the head, which initially for me was so scary. Yeah. Like, so scary. Um, and also through the heart was filled with so much shame or humiliation or people pleasing there was just not fun and it took me a while to get all the way down and, and find reverence reverence for my pussy reverence for this sacred orgasmic turn on about being alive um so i'm glad i've taken the journey and i'm sure i'll never get there um there's always more to unfold but it, it's this experience of like making love with life yeah making oh, love with the universe oh love alana i love that <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what I mean when yes. we are courageous enough to surrender and let life fucking. Oh, can I say that on your pop? I hope I yes. can. Yes, you okay. can say all the words. Okay. All the words. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um, let life penetrate us. Like, have your way with me, life. Yeah. That means we have to let go of control. That's freaking terrifying. So, if there isn't a home on the inside, how could you ever do that with life? But when we practice and we get better and better at it, then. Uh, yeah, it's, I wake up and I'm not every day, but most of the days I'm like, what you got for me today? What you got? Like, and it's, you get to like flirt and be alluring with the universe. Um, and it's very empowering, very sassy. Um, and I don't think I look 52, but like the older I get, it's like, I don't feel, I'm just, sometimes I'm like, you're feeling, how did that happen? But it's, uh, yeah, life is delicious when I live orgasmically. Oh, I love it. I love, I love everything that you said. And I especially, um, really love the way that you described, you know, not from the mind, yeah. right. From the fears and the worry and the doubts and the, the go-to, and I got to do this and all of that crazy monkey mind. And then n naming like in the heart, right. Yeah. You said the shame. And for me, like in the heart, it was just a lot of fear around receiving because of my experiences with people, right. Yeah. That opening my heart wasn't always the easiest thing to do. Yeah. And then of course, you know, the pussy, which like, I still even struggle saying that word. I'm not going to lie. Like I bought a uh, mama Gina's book and I had yeah. it on my bookshelf for years before I could even like read it. So oh my God, it's really, but, that's awesome. <laughs> but from that sacred energy of our power center, right? Our vulva, mm -hmm. our, our just, just being in, in all of that. And I love just the trajectory that you went with that, 
right? Mm -hmm. Because orgasmic living really is about diving into our body yeah, yeah. and into the energies that are available to us when we have a body because we have a body. And I mostly love like allowing life to make love to me. And that is actually one of the things that I've been really, um, I think I started from the other side up. Like I started with the body and the pussy and getting into that energy. And then I had to work on the heart. And then, you know, so I went in the other way. And right now what I'm playing with is the surrender and the letting go of control and allowing life to make love to me, allowing the divine to work through me. I mean, I've always had some of that, right? Like, well, what does consciousness want from me today? But to really cultivate that relationship with the divine and how can that add to living orgasmically? Mm -hmm. Um, So, so we kind of went, you went this way and I went that way and it doesn't matter which way you go. There is no right one way to get it's all the same path home it's just our different paths home to totally, the same yeah. totally. I yeah. love it I love it thank you thank you mm. um yay so I'm curious Alana as you know an intimacy expert and I don't call myself an intimacy expert but it is a lot of what I work with women um develop developing intimacy with yourself developing intimacy with your body yeah. and I just want to hear what like what do you want to share with everyone listening about intimacy like what do you know about intimacy well I I knew that I wasn't intimate with myself that's the first place I just knew I was three steps ahead, trying to do it right to be safe. And if I could look good in the meantime and make some money, super great. But really it was all about safety. And I had to control the outside in order to be safe on the inside. Mm. Um, And as I began to go inside the heart out of, because I'm one of those, like I'm cum laude graduate, cum laude, you know, university, Ivy league. Like I was, I was really leading with the brain. So as I came into the heart, I was so humiliated that I wasn't perfect humiliated that I'd had two divorces, humiliated that I almost went bankrupt. I basically lost all my money in a custody battle, lost the house, went into debt, all that kind of stuff. Just all these like humiliation. I couldn't get in the heart because I just hated myself so much. And when I started to see in my mind's eye, I'd done enough quantum psychology, spiritual technology training to understand we need image, thought, emotion, body sensation to fully integrate that energy. So I began to see little you in the corner of the back of my heart, ashamed. And I began to hear the thoughts of how I was really talking to her. And I began to feel the humiliation and not shut it down, but just be with it, breathe. And then the body sensations of what that felt like in my nauseousness, in my stomach, in my closed heart, in my hunched shoulders, the furrowed brow that I now use Botox for, but like the whole thing, right? Like um, all of that, I was like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, little one. God, you're already feeling like crap. And here I am hitting you over the head with a two by four with my words and my behaviors. Mm. And I got to a place uh, where I, I always, if I went in initially, I wanted to go, go in to fix her, go in to put her in a better mood, go in to let's, you know, change her. It was, this, it was saying the way you are is not okay. I was judging her. And then one day I just decided, okay, what if I just sat there and just said, you know what? Even if you never change forever, even if you never change for eternity, I love you and I accept you. Mm. And something began to shift because I thought it was all about the outcome. It was all about looking good and having success and being happy, right? Like, um, but no, it's actually just about being. Mm-hmm. being. And as soon as she's like, really? You're not going to be an asshole? Like, <laughs> she's, you're, you're going to be nice to me? We, inside of me, this disassociated part, started to come home. And then I found there was probably like 20 of them, (laughs) like all sorts of different ones inside, you know, the sad, the mad, the ashamed, the sexual expression was wrong, the, all of it. And I began to bring them more home. And then I had this experience of confidence from the inside out. Like I didn't need an external circumstance to happen to feel enough. And then once that started to be cultivated, then I was like, oh, maybe the universe thinks I'm okay. Like maybe the universe loves me unconditionally forever, even if I'm a hot mess. Oh, that's a big risk, but maybe we should ask. And then I started to cultivate this relationship with the universe. Like, I know you love me when I'm a good girl and I, and I do a good job and I make a difference on the planet and I, I make my impact, but do you love me when I don't know what to do? 
Do you love me when I lose it all? Do you love me? Like it just brings up tears even now, like this last breakup was so awful. Mm. And I was so ashamed of myself Mm. that I put up with what I put up with for so long. Do you love me even though I made such a big mistake? And then in that relationship that I've cultivated with the universe, they're like, there are no mistakes. Mm -hmm. You grew, you, you learned. You've learned to forgive yourself. You've learned to forgive another. You've learned to put your foot down. You've learned to open your heart and speak up for yourself and no longer keep a man's secret. That's not your job. And I was taken back to two years old where dad, I was dancing around the living room like a little Sufi dancer to Jesus Christ, superstar on those big old record players, you know? Um, And then boom, hand through the wall. Like, I guess I didn't hear him be quiet. And a little two-year-old made it mean a lot of things about men. Right. and safety, but also that it was somehow my job to calm him down, to heal him. Mm. And that was like entrained real young. And so I saw that in this last relationship. Oh, when a man gets angry, it's not my job. I'm just a bright light. I either inspire with my light or I trigger with my light. I'm just a bright light. Yeah. It's not my job. Yeah. And so that was a, another wonderful way to have an intimate relationship with myself forgive myself, love myself, grow and get back to, oh, you're not against me universe. We can still make love. We can still play yeah. what you got, what you got for me now. I'm ready. You know, I love it. I love it. Gosh, you touched on so many things that I think as women, we struggle with, you know, uh, that responsibility. <sighs> let me, let me rephrase that. Our innate our innate nurture, desire caring. Nurture, yeah. our innate desire to nurture and care for, which is a beautiful thing. And I've actually really been paying attention to this because I was judging myself because of that innate desire. Mm. And, and the words that I was using was like, oh, I'm overgiving. Oh, mm. I'm people pleasing. And then I realized like, wait a minute, those are really subtle judgments of my heart's true desire to be open and to gift and receive energies with everyone and to love. And in that judgment of, oh, I'm overgiving, I'm a people pleaser. I was shutting off my own heart and my own caring. I'm not overgiving. I love to give. It is part of what makes me a radiant woman. Yes. I love to please. I love to please my partner. I love it. I love it. I've always loved it. And, and it it makes me happy. Like when I can please him and then he is, you know, happy, it, it gives energy to me. And so, so those, those judgments are like, oh, I'm over giving or I'm people pleasing. Like I've really started to shift those for myself and just acknowledging like my own innate bigness and love and being more aware of Um, maybe I need to point my hose in a different direction. (laughs) Yes. Not cut it off. Right. It's too much. No. The world actually needs that. Thank you. So if being received received, and if unhappy it is not about shutting off that flow it is about pointing it in another direction and yes and lord knows most importantly pointing it towards yourself oh yes yes pointing yeah. it towards yourself first like and and it's funny because you started talking when i i wanted to talk about appreciation yeah. and when i first sort of i was like oh appreciation yeah appreciating your partner but no let's talk about appreciating ourselves yes as women as beautiful, erotic, feminine creatures and beings and our innate brilliances, which include nurturing and loving and being that open, right? So stepping into that place of self-appreciation, wow, I'm really good at pleasing. I'm really good at tapping into the energy, seeing what is needed and being able to offer it. Yes. That's a talent, right? Yeah. And appreciating that and then being aware of, of where you direct that, not cutting it off. Because 
God knows <laughs> the world needs nurturing yes. and nurturing right now. And yeah. And that open-hearted, loving, non-judgmental, unconditional love. But unless we can have that for ourselves, it is really practically impossible to have it for someone else. Oh yeah. Well, you can't, you can't give from empty. No. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's curious. This last year's relationship was such a, a deep or high, whatever you want to call it, level uh, experience for me. Cause when I met him, I had been doing quite a good job of this self-appreciation, my morning practice, my dance practice, my self-pleasuring practice, my being in nature, like eating well, being with girlfriends, even though it was during COVID, it was on Zoom, but whatever. Um, the same thing I was doing, I was really doing quite well. And when I met him, I was really giving from the overflow to everyone. I made sure I connected with everyone at the retreat. So they felt safe, seen and understood because that feeds me to yeah. be that present and have that intimate connection with so many people, see the best in them. And, and then I fell quite madly for this gentleman. And then after a couple months, um, moved in with him. And I just noticed I, I started to have my morning practice, not, there wasn't really space for me uh, in his home for my morning practice. So I said, well, I'm just going to do my affirmations and I'm going to work out. Mm -hmm. So it was still time for me, but it wasn't the feminine nourishing fill up my cup time of listening. Yeah. And the, the sex was hot, but it wasn't, I don't know, harmoniously balanced with the making love as the kinky sex. So, and I was like, oh, that'll be fine. I'll, I'll like, I, I went to my head. Oh, I'll, I'll teach him about that. We'll get there eventually. And it just slowly, but surely I started to go away. Right. And I started to go into the old pattern that the gift of this relationship was to flush it up. The, where it's his needs first, or if I said, if I was a little too bright um, and this nourishing overflow made him uncomfortable because of his wounds, oh, let's just tone that down. Let's just put that in a box. Yeah. And it's sort of like a frog in the hot water. You don't yeah. notice it till you're dead, right? The frog's yeah. dead. Yeah. And so over time, and then the violent outbursts, and then, oh my God, what have I done? Yeah. And just so ashamed. Like, how did I do this? I'm a freaking intimacy expert. And then I don't want anyone to know about this. I didn't want to slow down to feel my feelings, which would have said, it's okay. We all make mistakes, bless him, release him and move on. I didn't want to feel that. I didn't want to face the unknown again. I just packed up all my stuff. He was the one finally all this stuff. Right. And so it got worse and worse. And I kept shutting my truth down and projecting it out into trying to nurture him into kindness, which probably from his point of view felt like controlling and hypervigilance and all that stuff that didn't feel good to him, which exacerbated it just got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. It got worse and worse and worse. And so I, I never in the past had true compassion for women that were in a domestic violence situation yeah. from my point of view. Cause I'd never experienced it. I was like, leave. I, yeah. You I never know until you're in it. that. You, you, it's like, you, you just don't get how that works, but you, you explained it so beautifully. And, but I think that this is also something, I just want to touch on some of the things that you said, Please. um, you know, you, you were full, full, full and overflowing and you were giving from that overflow. And then I, I do think that sometimes when we get into relationship and this is, this is like the thing to be mindful of yeah. is that you start, you know, depleting yourself and then there's nothing left. And, and that contraction, right? Like you're not filling yourself first. You're not filling yourself first and you're simultaneously shaming yourself and you're yeah. simultaneously terrified of the next abuse. Yeah. You add all that together over time, over a 10 month period of time. And I was, I literally didn't have the capacity to leave. Yeah. Like yeah. The strongest chica I'm driven as all get out. I mean, I'm as brave and courageous as they come. And I didn't have the energetic capacity to leave. Yeah. It took him getting arrested to stop mm -hmm. the cycle. Right. I would have stayed for another round and another round and another yeah. round. And mm -hmm. so now as an intimacy expert, I feel grateful for the experience so that I can apologize um, energetically to any woman that I've ever met that I've judged thinking what's wrong with her. Why didn't she leave? And I now have compassion that she's so depleted that she's just barely keeping it together. The mind, the body, the spirit, the whole thing. 
And what I did realize is that we, from that place, we can ask for help, but even that was hard. I remember being back here in LA. I was back in LA in, in August and I saw some girlfriends that I've known for 20 years. And they said, we've never seen you this insecure. What's mm. going on? Mm. And they were right there, girlfriends of 20 years. But I said, oh, no, I'm fine. I still, I still didn't have the courage to ask for help, but that's got to be the first step yeah. is asking for help because you don't have the strength to get out on your own first. But in a very short period of time, it's been about two months now, the resilience is coming back, the energy is coming back, the self-care and the appreciation, the forgiveness, mm -hmm. the gratitude of the beautiful gift that this provided mm -hmm. and, and really uh, giving that of what I learned to others with a hell of a lot more humility than I've ever had. Yeah. And also a real checking in what are the structures I didn't have in place that led to that, that I can put in place? Right. Where's the next level of vulnerability to share or receive people's guidance or care and mm -hmm. not deflect it? Like, who can I be so that I can be even braver, even more humble, even more open with people, my friends, but the universe as well. And I believe this next phase for me anyways, and I'll be curious to see what your definition of surrender is right now, but I think I've been overly pushing, driving, and I can call it spiritual words, serving, contributing. I could, call, right. I can make it sound, really good. but it's really the masculine. Yeah. Yeah. And she still a self-worth thing. The next level of self-worth. Mm -hmm. Do I really deserve that level of care, support, being held, being nurtured? So a little self, next level of self-worth for me as well. Yeah. Beautiful. I, you know, it's funny. I, I also used to think that like, why don't they just leave? Right. And then I was also gifted by the universe with an abusive relationship where I, I experienced exactly what you're describing. And I remember wow. for me, the lesson that I took the most out of that was if I am hiding something about my relationship, if I'm not willing to share with my friends what's going on, something's off. Yes, thank you. Something's off. Yeah. If I'm not like really, because I'm an I, I I'll tell my friends anything and everything. I don't hide anything like that yeah. to me. You know, with my close friends that I trust, yeah. um, that to me, <clears throat> excuse me, is part of being vulnerable and open is sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if I'm yeah. at a place, that was the lesson that I got. Yeah. If I'm at a place where I am not telling people what's going on in my life, something's off and I need to check in. So for any of, of you all listening, you know, with that, with that tip, that's what has worked for me. And that is what I've used, right? This relationship was in my early twenties since then to uh, get real, real right with myself about yeah. what's happening in my, my relationships with my partners. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for your vulnerability and your courage yeah. in sharing that. And I do want to, gosh, all I remember, I remember, you know, in transition between relationships, the next thing that I did is that I made a list of all of the things that I would do for myself. And mm -hmm. I promised myself that when I got into another relationship, I would not give those things up no matter what. Thank you. And I think that the, the sort of shadow side of that giving and that opening and that loving is exactly what we've described where you're like, oh yeah, I'm feeling myself, I'm feeling myself. And then we get into a relationship and no, oh, we'll deal with that later and we'll check it out later. And before you know it, you're doing nothing to fill yourself. Yes. You're doing nothing to put yourself first and you have given yourself up, right? To try to make it work or to try to, to, yes. to you know, um, inspire, support, you know, whatever. And I do think that the feminine has the ability and the capacity to inspire the masculine to more yes. and the masculine has to be willing to be inspired. And that inspiration comes from the radiance and the overflowing. It does not come from depletion. Totally. We don't serve ourselves first, 
right? As the feminine, as women, uh, if we don't have our community of women that we can, you know, lean on for support and, and, and all of that, if we're not serving ourselves first, none of that is ever going to work, you oh, know? Um, right. so yeah. And, you asked about surrender for me really oh, surrendering right now is about surrendering into the divine mm, yes. into divine intelligence and on a different kind of level because you know as a business owner as an entrepreneur as a woman who's like out there creating and and i do embody a lot of the masculine you know directional go get it get it done like that energy um, and, and so I've been, and then, you know, we, we dance, we, we pole dance and, and I cultivate the feminine in my way, but in the business, it is a lot in that part of the business. I think with my clients, it's, it's a little bit different, although I do embody the masculine for them because I provide that safe space holder, yeah. container, yeah. right. That safe space for, for them to, to surrender into their feminine. Mm. Um, but surrender, it's just, it's something I've really been, especially in the last couple of years with everything that's been going on, yeah. um, surrendering to like, all right, thy will be done. Yes. You know, I, I know I have a mission and a purpose and I've done my part and like, and now let's work together and, and let me just let you leave. Cause <laughs> I led, I led me as far as I could. Right. Yeah. Um, and I also am finding that like, just with, with my partner, like I've done everything that I can as a feminine creature on my own. And yeah. it's time to allow more people in, to allow more of the divine in to, to guide me and support me and be with me on that journey. Mm. So that, that's about, you know, where I'm at with mm. surrendering. And I think, I mean, it's like an everyday uh, lesson and every day more of just relaxing the jaw and coming into my body. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a journey. Like you said, it's a journey. Yeah. And we're all, we're all evolving into the next the next thing right now. And I mean, after one of my relationships, I chose to be single for six years mm. and just cultivate and cultivate mm. myself and, and grow mm. as a woman and, and let go of all of those abusive past experiences yeah. that I had created and been in for so long. And even looking back now, I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I stay so long in those situations? You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and again, there's that, like, it's not about cutting off the caring. Cause that's what I did. I would mm -hmm. cut off the caring and cut off. And then I, I became more, um, rigid and hard mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. it's been a process of like, oh, it's not about cutting off that energy. It's about opening it and, and, and pointing it in the, in the right direction, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. then those that, that it's not the right direction. I, I'll flow it to you anyway, but I, you know, my, our path Blessing release. Not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> boundaries, boundaries. <laughs> I love what you're saying. This idea of making love with the universe is to me, another way of saying like surrender to the divine guide me yeah. rather than me being in charge and me figuring it out and me making it happen. A um, couple of things I wanted to share just so that our viewers and listeners one thing that I've brought back now that I'm in this beautiful cabin, Airbnb in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming, the sunrises and sunsets are mm. epic. And so I get up early and I'm, I do my supplements and I do my exercise. Uh, some days I do with my trainer, some days, whatever, but there's a way that I can sit right over here and the sun against my body. And I practice because there was, you know, the abuse and stuff. There's my little girl inside. Um, she's scared and to open up slowly to the sun, mm. the sun being the masculine, the feminine being the moon, right. To allow the sun to illuminate me and in my body with my cup of witch's brew with all my cacao. And I, that's really something I didn't do for a year. I did not do that for a year. And that for me is so important to just breathe, not listening to my affirmations, not reading my spiritual books, just be. And then at the end of the day, because it's very cold here right now, it was minus six this morning. Um, and even though I'm Canadian, I'm still like, I'm a spoiled Canadian who lived in LA for 20 years. So um, there's a beautiful wood fireplace on the other side of the house. 
and the sunsets are gorgeous. Mm. I, and I have my mom's old fur. And so I sit there with my mom's old fur and the wooden stove and my cat and glass of wine at the end of the day and coffee in the morning. Um, and I just breathe again, just breathe. So I know that that level of bookending in beingness is what I require. And there's something about the, f- I don't know why, but I like the morning being sort of feminine, uh, listening to the whisper. Right. And the masculine um, being more, ma- uh, the end of the day being more masculine, praising and appreciating, back to appreciation myself. Look at what you showed up for today. Yeah. Oh, you fell down, but you did so without saying screw off, fuckhead, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> look at you. You had a little class there. That was good. Or look, you took, a, you took something brave there. Bravo. Mm-hmm. Like I praise myself at the end of the day. And that kind of yin yang also seems to, to support me. So I wanted to share, share that with with people that these practices are unique to you, right? Yeah. But you know it in your bones and in your blood and in your pussy and in your heart when you feel that being held. And then I feel we can transfer that inner um, alignment and to have that alignment come from the universe, which helps with the surrender because there's an inner home right. that outside is designed to be uncertain. An, in, an inner sense of safety. Totally. Yes. That's what you were talking about that before. And that's also something that I've been really, really cultivating, especially like after the pandemic and sort of everything got ripped out, you know, yeah, rugs pulled out, just everything just got ripped out of us. Um, but really that inner sense of safety, I think is, is cause then it doesn't matter what's happening around you. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter. You know, when you are secure in your inner sense of, of being cared for, right. Mm-hmm. By yourself, by, by the universe, by yeah. the divine. And it's that inner sense of safety that, that, I mean, it's just, it's been, it's been quite invaluable because yeah. the only thing you really can count on, right. Is things changing. Correct. Changing, and if- moving and, you know, bankruptcies and making a lot of money one day and not any of the other. And, you know, friends coming and going like everything in this world is, is meant to change, yeah, to change. One or another. Yeah. And having that inner, that having cultivated, right. Cause I mean, I wasn't born with that inner sense of safety. You know, I, have, I had an insane childhood, right. We have to go into the details, insane relationships over time. And, and, I have had to consciously cultivate yes. that inner sense of safety so yeah. that no matter what's going on around me, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. yeah, I love that practice. I also have been sitting in the morning, just sitting and just feeling the sun on my skin, right? Because yes. I, I love that sensation yes. from my body. It's very enlivening. And then I, you know, like you said, listening to the whispers, okay, who do I need to talk to today? What what do I need to do? And yes. sometimes it's just go out and have mm-hmm. fun, go to a yeah. movie, you know, get a meal. And then I like to dance in the evening just to kind of, you mm-hmm. know, uh, allow all of the energies cultivated throughout the day to just move through my body and let yes. them go and then start the new day the next day. So I love that. I love oh, that. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, you know, oh, please go ahead. We have so much we could talk about. <laughs> I wanted to, um, there was something that popped when you were talking. Cause um, when my partner and I decided to move in together and we were looking for a place together um he he was like we don't really need a two bedroom right let's just get a one bedroom he's from jersey he's just moved to california he's just like oh my god the prices right we don't really need we don't we don't need a two bedroom and i remember like really grounding into what i know i need for myself yeah what i know we are gonna need for the future Yes. And not giving that up. Yeah. No matter what, like he, and I know he had fears and, oh my God, the rent out here is crazy and all that kind of stuff. Not letting that energy sway me yes. from what I knew that I needed. And yeah. look, this is the first time I'm not going to lie. This is the first time in my life I have felt so grounded in myself. Yeah. Right. I've, I've been in, in your, those experiences before. Like I've, I've been there. This is the first relationship where I was just like, no, I need a two bedroom. We need a two bedroom. We are getting a two bedroom. And this is like, I had to lead us 
Yes. In yes. That. Yeah. Um, and I'm grateful that he is a, a man who is willing, you know, to, to be led and to allow me to, you know, it's, we both have both. Yes. Right. And I guess what I want, where I want to go with this, you know, kind of everything that we've talked about for, for women listening, one of our gifts is our gift of intuition, totally. the gift of knowing the future yeah. and really grounding into that knowing for yourself, because when you can um, be so present with what you need, yes. no matter what's going on around you, Yes, you can be so present in your inner sense of safety, no matter what's going on around you, whether it's your partner or your job or whatever, yeah. and, and have that demand for yourself. Yes. Demand for yourself of what you need and stand firm in that demand. I mean, that inner sense of like strength and security is to be cultivated, yeah. right? And, and sometimes we don't have it and sometimes we do, but I really wanted to highlight and it kind of like everything that we've been talking about. And that's living orgasmically too, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what you desire, knowing what you need and asking for it and receiving it and demanding it if that's what's needed. Oh. Um, so oh. that popped, I don't know, for whoever needed to, to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's um, I call it pussy discernment. Yes, there you go. When I take the, and, and to have pussy discernment, I need to make the time to listen and yes. cultivate that through movement and through meditation and through my quiet time, uh, et cetera. But I literally, I literally imagine it's my pussy lips talking, not these lips talking. Right. Because if I don't start there through an open heart that is brave and vulnerable and scared of rejection, but when my heart's all the way open, I know what I know what I know, I know. I can hear my pussy. I can hear my wisdom. I can hear it. And if I slightly close it, then I get on the way up to my head. And my head can talk me into anything or out of anything. Totally. totally. You know, I, 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 and I'm resilient and I'm brave and I have a good attitude and uh, right? right. But she knows, she knows. And so with this apartment situation for, for you or with my situation, I didn't want to listen because mm. she didn't know. She knew the whole time. Mm. And my heart was so closed and scared after the first uh, uh, event um, that I just stayed in my head the whole time. Right. Yeah. The whole time. And that that's going to talk you into fine. A one bedroom is fine. We don't need a two bedroom. Right. And that's what I did for 10 months. And so I really got the lesson this time that I need the structure first to be sure that when I, I hadn't lived with um, man for 15 years it's a little out of practice so um maybe even longer than that maybe closer to 20 years my son my son is 19 this month can you believe it no yeah six five and 19 years old so it's actually been probably more like two decades since I've lived with somebody so a little bit out of practice and I didn't yeah. think ahead and make the list like you did I made the list with who he is as a, as a human but not what I needed for the queen to be the goddess and give from the overflow to serve the relationship and have it thrive um and so very quickly, I couldn't hear the pussy discernment, the intuition of what I really needed. And I think this is important for all of us to be sure we not only know what we're looking for in a relationship, but remember that first relationship is with ourselves. That's the first intimate relationship. What do I need to keep this relationship thriving so I can be my best in every single area of my life? You know, I, I, I want to, for those of you that are also not really used to hearing the word pussy all the time, um, <laughs> for me, vagina the, discernment, vagina, vagina. Vulva, your genitals, whatever, for me, it's, it's just listening to your body's, yes. to your body's brilliance. Your body will never lie to you. Hmm. Your body will never lie to you. And that's why movement and dance are something that I, like I joke, if I don't dance, if I don't go to my pole dancing classes, if I don't go to my S factor classes, if I don't, if I don't dance at my house, it's not going to go well for anyone. I like to <laughs> like people will die if I don't <laughs> Cause you know, the, the like rev of that potency and that energy that, that like has to come out somehow, yes. right. Which I flow through movement and, and dancing, yes. but it also really connects me to my body's wisdom. Yes. You're totally right. The mind will justify and yeah. talk me out of and like, well, you know, not this time, but maybe next time and all that kind of stuff. But, but 
embodying. Yeah. That's what embodiment is, getting in, getting out of the mind and into, into the, the body. body. Do you and know- listening and adding to that, because I don't think that we're really taught this as much as I would like us, which is why my mission is what it is. Yeah. But to really listen to your body's realness, your body will tell you when you are not safe. Totally. I will tell you sometimes you have to discerning is important too. Cause sometimes it's a past safe that your body's alerting you to. So there has to be a awareness around that. Yeah. But you, you said it my body knew and I didn't listen because you were closed in your heart or, or, you know, however that works for you. So for, for everyone listening, it is different for everyone, right? The way that your body communicates to you, but developing that intimacy, there's intimacy with yourself as a being, but there is intimacy with your body. hundred percent. As a, a brilliant creature on this planet that we get to play with. This is like my primary playmates, me and my body. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Everything else is extra because I'm, I'm just, this is me and my life and my body's life. Everything else is, is, you know, so, so really developing that intimacy with your body so that when she's trying to get your attention, you listen, we'll listen. Yeah. You know, wild. The Oh, I do guts like those gut instincts, right? Oh, I, I was going to, I was going to go down the alley, but my gut said something, right? That's your body saying, don't go down that alley. Yes. Don't go up to that hotel room. Don't go on that date with that guy, right? Yeah. Like yeah. your body is continuously trying to keep you safe. Yeah. Even you say something. I just get yeah. so passionate about oh, this. Topic. I, love I love it. I love it. No, <laughs> a couple of things. One, it works for men too, because I've taught this to my son. Like when he goes to parties, what car to get into and what car not to get into or to call me. And he knows like his body knows. So it's, it's a, a, a human thing, but certainly a, a feminine, a feminine superpower uh, Two, um, I've been dancing with Christina Lloyd on zoom ever since. I love her. Right, don't we love her? She's come to my retreats to like the you know lead some of my uh, clients. But uh, every week on Zoom, you know, we we get together. No matter where I am on the planet, we find some space and we roll around. And it's just instant. She's holding space. I've danced with her for like a decade back in LA, and she knows my body. She's a whisperer like you are. And there's no escaping when I just like lie down and she's there and she's talking. It's just like okay, here we go. Yeah. It's very important. Sometimes I tell women on a date to uh, go to the bathroom, sit on the toilet and talk to your vagina. Is she clenched or is she right. okay? Right. Yeah. She'll tell you she's always, she knows every single time. Yeah. And, um, and as you said, also the discernment piece for me, if we haven't integrated past traumas, right. They will get triggered by a present moment to be, to be healed, but we can misinterpret the situation Um, so if you just keep that, I keep doing the work, I always have plenty of coaches. I think it's out of integrity to be a coach. If you don't have a coach totally, or several in my case. Um, but so I'm always integrating things so I can see clearly once the integrations occurred, what's actually happening in front of me. Was it a trigger to support me in healing this or was it an actual like, thank you, but no, thank you. Um, and as high level as we are, we never get there. Yeah. Yeah. Next level. Speaking of triggers, um, my, my boyfriend and I tried to watch the Wolf of Wall Street. And immediately my body was like, even when the movie came out, my body was like, and I was like, I don't need to see that movie. I hear, I get it. Y'all think it's amazing, but I know I do not need to see that movie. And so much time had passed, right? That I was like, well, I'll try. I'll try. 20 minutes in, I was like, Mm-mm, I can't, my, I had, my body was just like, <gasps> right. And I, I, I got up and I went into the bathroom and, you know, everything clenched tense. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just sitting in, I didn't even want to come out of the bathroom. Cause then what happened? Like the movie triggered all of these past experiences and these past memories. And my whole body was just like this. And I was, just, I didn't even want to come out of the bathroom Wow! God from my partner. He came in and he's like, are you okay? And I was like, I can't watch that movie. It's like, 
everything awful about men. And I have too many experiences of that already. I'm trying to heal that. I can't watch that movie. And thank God, you know, he was able to like sit with me and, and Mm -hmm. I told him all of the memories that were coming up and, you know, he held space and was in his mask in and turned off the movie immediately. It's okay. We don't have to watch it. I told Mm him like, and he was really able to be there for me, but that's another, like, just, I hope that example helps for people who are like triggers. I don't know what that means. What, what are you talking about? But it could be anything, you yeah. know, that movie just between the the debauchery and the drugs and the, the behavior, of the unhealthy, in my opinion, behavior of the men. It was just like my system was like a no, no. Yeah. And I yeah. just left mm-hmm. and thank God he came after me and, and helped me work through that, you know, yeah. Yeah. um, but we, you know, we just really have to be paying attention to the sensations and the information that our body yeah. is giving us in any yeah. given moment. And yeah. when you can do that, because, you know, I guarantee at some point in my life, I would have sat through the whole movie mm. and sucked it up. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Well, and just it and frozen and you know, triggered. And then maybe that later would have started a fight and I would have started accusing him of that behavior. Like all that shit would have happened in the Oh yeah, then I would have ended the night with it's all my fault. Yeah, right. (laughs) Totally, totally. Oh, I'm sorry I said that. It's terrible, blah, blah, blah. Um, You know, but I I owned that. I was like, well, let me see because I'm always open to things growing changing well yeah, let me yeah. see how I, let, let me just see how it goes I'll yeah. let you know yeah. right and that's yeah. that's also an important thing is like you can change your mind yes yes fine you can try it out and if it's not working it's okay to walk away yeah it's okay Beautiful. to let go it's okay to take care of yourself first oh I could have laid there and watched it because he was laughing and I was like I don't know he thinks this is funny this is like horrible it's like every and then of course deep soulful siren and i went into this is everything that's wrong with the world right now and I, I, within like 20 minutes i had lost hope for the for the entirety of <laughs> this movie i'm not dramatic or anything no, you know, no, I, but like I, it's just that, that's just my heart and i was like no i have to protect my energy right now uh, yeah I'm doing it whatever i i don't even want to you know um this is so good honey because like our bodies will tell us like, oh, hell no. And maybe our mind will be like, oh, well, let's give it a try. But again, hell no. But our body also says, hell yeah. Yeah. Or fuck yeah. Yeah, It'll show you the direction of of what's nourishing for you. And it might, people are like, well, that's stupid. doesn't matter what they think. You know, that's your thing that really fills you up and brings you back to the center. And I think now that life is so like polarized and there's such Mm -hmm. intensity out there, I think it's more important than ever that we find those practices, those locations, those environments. I don't know about you with your human design, but I'm like an open identity. So I become my environment. It's not okay to be in this hotel room. And the other person can be like, it's totally no problem. And you can be, thank you. And I need another hotel room. This room doesn't work for me. So to, it could be environment, people, job, clothes. It could be anything, but our body knows and our body keeps score. So to, to really honor it, as a, as a best friend to create that foundation so that we can, in a really intense time, thrive. Yeah. We can yeah. thrive. Yeah. We can be there I, together and help each other. And, and I mean, this is all right. Thank you for, for highlighting that and for bringing it back to, because I mean, this is what orgasmic living is for me. It's tuning into my body's brilliance and allowing her to lead me to something greater. Yeah. Right. Because she wants to enjoy life. Right. As my playmate in this world. Yes. She wants to have fun and and enjoy luxurious things and laugh and play. And so when I have those moments, right, I allow her to lead me Mm -hmm. into something bigger and greater. And I joke like I wouldn't have my business if it wasn't for my body's brilliance. Yeah. If you would have told me, I mean, I'm still like uncomfortable slightly a little bit with the word pussy, right? <laughs> but here I am, you know, and I woke up this morning a little bit like, oh, I don't know if I feel like doing a podcast today. Was, no, my body was like, no, come on. You haven't seen Alana in a long time. You're going to play. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to let you lead on this one. Cause I'm not really in the mood, you know? Um, but she always, she, she is always contributing 
to yeah. my life being greater and to yeah. choices that are greater than anything than that my mind could have Thank talked you. me into or talked me out of. Mm. Right? So for me, orgasmic living is really about that communion, connection, mm. intimacy that I have with my body that always leads mm. me to more. Oh, um, and yeah. even in situations where I didn't think it was more because yeah. it wasn't a, a delicious experience, I still trust that there will be more on the other side of it. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. a real gift to me right now. Um, the The moment I looked in my past partner's eyes, mm. I swear I felt nine dimensions deep of like possibility. Mm. Yeah. And I just didn't think it would be the way it was, but I'm so much better, deeper, yeah. more loving, more powerful than I ever knew I could be through that path so um she knew yeah she knew yeah. and then the other the it other never people shows up the way you think it will no i i hate that i think one day it will but it never does and in fact the second piece i wanted to say thank you to that my body's like yeah 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 um so I, I don't know if you know this but i started a partnering app about a year and a half ago See that. Yes. Yeah. So the dating apps, I believe, are designed to keep people single oh because God. they make money when you don't <laughs> succeed. They make money when you come back more devastated than you ever. Just say right? dating app, and my heart is already, and I feel nauseous. Thank you. So I've I've created the world's <laughs> first partnering app where it is a a, a place where you have intimacy training. Mm. You gather on Zoom to have conscious connection mm. and learn how to. Uh, speak unapologetically and listen without interrupting and connect deeply. And then everyone on the dating portion of the app is doing the work. So you know that it's people that are willing to lean in with their heart open and create a conscious relationship and, and make a bunch of friends and allies along the way. It's about becoming the one to find the one to keep the one. So that's the partnering app, um, which was filled with bugs for all of this past year. And so when everything went down and the uh, relationship ended, the tech people took responsibility and said, okay, we're starting from scratch. We, you don't have to pay for anything until we rebuild it on another platform. Come to India. Come to India as our first entrepreneur in residence. Let us put you up, give you a car, come into the office. Let's really work on this. Now, when the offer was made, was my heart open? No, terribly closed because everything had just gone down. Pussy open, definitely not closed. Everything had just gone down. Um, mind and a uh, wounded little girl, who didn't want to be hurt anymore, sure wanted to be saved. So it all sounded super great. So two months in or so we're doing all the visas, getting my cat with a chip and her new rabies shots and getting the car truck lease. Okay. Who's going to take my lease. And like, there's a lot of freaking details. And then what, there's only one airline that will take a cat in the cabin to India. So you got five flights to find anyways, but I was doing the, I guess the masculine head. It makes sense. I'm grateful. I mean, it's a stand, I'm a stand for humanity. This is my purpose. I'm, you know, I, I could make it make sense in, in all the, all the ways. Um, but it's been two months, Patty. And I got rejected for the seventh time from the Indian consulate for not signing a piece of paper. And I'm like, I give, I surrender. I'm not going. Uh, maybe later I will. Maybe I'll just come for a month from time to time. But my body, as soon as I said, and it's only been 48 hours before this interview that I said, mm -hmm. I surrender. I surrender. And my body's like, Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. And then to let my body go, what would delight you? Where would you like to live? And, uh, I'd like to unpack my pods. That's what I'd like to do. Ever since my son went to go live with his dad, I've been in pods. Yeah. It's time to unpack the pods. It's time to put the pole up. That just gave me full body goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, right? So the and body knows. Difference. You started talking about India and I was like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. But body From here, same to me too. And the second you said unpack the pods, my body went. <sighs> right? Cabin on water with a little dog, paddle boarding, happy girl, pole, morning sunrise, evening sunset. Like I know my body knows. And it's like that level of faith, trust, self-worth knowing in the face of what do you mean you should go to india that this is an amazing offer and what do you mean you should he's a great guy and all that's you know all of it mm. he is a great guy mm. and i'm not my light is not uh received well as we said poor if it's not going to be poured there and received with grace and and respect and honor 
thank you. I bless you and release you. I don't have to close my heart. Don't have to blame, but I also don't need to put up with any of that. Put my foot down and love back to that intimacy with self appreciation of self. Thank you for these extraordinary lessons. Thank you even for India with the offer. This body and being orgasmic living is a cabin on a lake paddle boarding with my pole and my pods unpacked. <laughs> I'm a really pretty simple gal. That's what I'm choosing. Full body goosebumps again. Yeah. Goosebumps. Thank you for sharing that because, you know, it, this season, I've just been asking all of my guests, what does yeah. it mean to you? Because what I've realized in diving into this work and working with women and working with, with my clients is that it means something different to everyone. Yes. Then we said that before, there is no one way, there is no one path, there is no one anything. Yeah. And you know, I've I've just heard the most magnificent responses. Yeah. And I love like orgasmic living to you is a cabin in the woods unpacking your pods. I mean, that's and, my and pussy is literally and, buzzing right and now. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm like, yes, that, that yes, energy. That. I'm having that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I love it. And that to me, that's, you know, look, there's the, the guidance that we receive from the universe, the guidance that we receive from the divine. I'm finding yes. that those are two different kinds of things for me right now. The guidance that we receive, you know, from our intuition, our own being, and there is the guidance that we can receive from our bodies. Totally you know, yeah. and however that shows up for you, you know, goosebumps, you said, you know, is your pussy clenched or not? Mm. Uh, relaxation, dropping of the jaw, like what is actually going to create that for, for, for your life, your body can guide you in that What a wonderful, beautiful mm. example. Thank you so much. I feel like we could just talk forever. So I'm super glad that you're gonna be on my podcast soon. I'll be on your podcast next. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll like team up and we'll release this one first and then we'll release that one. So if you're listening to this, you probably are in the future. Um, not in this moment right now that we're at, but check me out on her podcast because I'm sure we will continue this conversation. Will, here. Yeah. Alana, you, you are... I, I said it when you, I was like, well, she, you know, we got to fix your lighting. You're just such a bright light. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad that I got to acknowledge that without really knowing everything that, that has been going on and you are a bright light and I have been admiring you uh, mm -hmm. from close and from afar. And I'm just so honored to know you and to be on this journey with you, right? I'm also an advocate for humanity, mostly for bodies. I, I love bodies way more than people sometimes. Um, I, so, so just as being an advocate for this world being a better place yeah. or, you know, beautiful relationships to be created and, and lessons to be learned and all of that. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to take a few minutes and just offer your free gift. Oh. And I'll offer mine and that'll be that. Oh, it sounds divine. Thank you, sister. So good. So good. Yeah. Um, with intimacy, as we were speaking so much, you know, we try to figure out ourselves, but uh, really, I believe the core of, of issues around intimacy, it's a blind spot. If we could have seen it, we would have changed it because we're all, we all do the work. So I've developed an intimacy blind spot assessment that will take you through whether you're new to the work or quite a master in the work and get underneath what the mind can't seem to figure out so that you know, oh, that's what's going on. Um, and this awareness is just more understanding of why things aren't working, but at least you've got the, the direction. And then from there, working with somebody like me or working with Patty, some, somebody that can take you through and be that space holder to integrate these triggers and traumas so that the patterns don't repeat anymore. And so you can have that deeper intimacy with yourself, your body, with the divine uh, and with your beloved. And I find it tends to go into intimacy with money, intimacy with your business, your purpose. Like it's just intimacy everywhere. Um, and uh, it's delicious. So that is my free gift. And I will give the, the link. You can put it in the show notes. It'll and be. It'll be everywhere, the link, wherever you're listening to, whether it's on YouTube or on my website or, you know, we'll, we'll put the links, the links. Yeah. Out I'd also like to invite people into HeartMates. That's the name yes. of the partnering app, HeartMates, as opposed to SoulMates. Yes. Um, that's HeartMates.app. 
and the dating portion is still in beta. I'm on my way to India at some point to help them out, but for now, via Zoom. Your body will let you know when to go. Yes, it's true. My body and the visa will probably come back from the consulate when it's all like green light. But for now, the incredible intimacy training is extraordinary. People are on the conscious connection calls every single week, and it's a building beautiful community to practice becoming the one and let go of that attachment to finding the one, knowing that the inside creates the outside. So we welcome you now into that community um, and to do the work and have some fun. And we're very much about sacred sexuality as well, so that that divine energy can be that alluring vortex uh, for your ideal partner and then lastly I love doing videos every single week answering your questions on YouTube so please get into my world so that I can support you and then definitely stay tuned with intimate conversations my podcast because this gorgeous goddess will be on it shortly and there's hundreds of incredible episodes that are raw and edgy and heartfelt and real and will inspire you Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that. I know that I am on her YouTube channel and I watch her podcast all the time. So whatever of those free gifts that, that pings your body with pleasure, do it and choose it. (laughs) Um, as for myself, um, you know, living an orgasmic life, what does that mean? And what does that look like for you? I have identified 10 pillars to living an orgasmic life and you can find out what those are at Um, And you can take the quiz at orgasmiclivingquiz.com. You'll get a sense of what those things are because it's not just about sex. It's not just about, you know, it's a whole life, body, being thing that we need to explore. And it is a path and it is a path. So it's a way for you to find out where you are on that path and on that journey to living your most beautiful, juiciest orgasmic life. So orgasmiclivingquiz.com. Alana, thank you. Thank you for gracing me with your beauty and your presence. Always an honor. And I'm sure we'll see each other somewhere around the world. Absolutely. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone.